Okay, so I wanted to do this thing again. It's kind of like a vortex analysis, except it's going to be much, much shorter than um, what I did last time, which was like 20 minutes. This is only covering uh, about 18 seconds of footage here. But there, there's it's something very, very uh, important for people to understand. So there's a few ways to think about vortex dogfighting. The first way is, well, there's, there's, to start off, you have to divide your mindset, your philosophy into two things, right? The first one, obviously, is aiming, aiming at your opponent, which in this case, my sample video is against Charbot. I'll get to more, more behind the, um, um, you know the dogfight, why it's happening, the context of the dogfight, right? So you have to obviously aim at your opponent. How are you going to do that? The second way is, the second thing you have to think about is how are you going to dodge? So most like the average, uh, and now I'm not talking about the actual average where people just kind of hold down Q and try to go above or over your opponent or, you know, be at a level above them. To make it easier to shoot so you're shooting down on them. I'm not talking about that kind of average. I'm talking about kind of the average. You know you're, what you're actually doing in dogfighting. You know, you're using... You're actually using the dodging to the best of your ability to make sure that your opponent cannot hit you. Okay? Most people think that button mashing is the way to go. And, you know, it worked for some time, and then I kind of flipped my philosophy, changed my philosophy, changed the way I think, and now it doesn't work anymore. Button mashing doesn't really work, right? So that, that's how the average thinks. The average for aiming is that you have to track them. Now, this is very good because you can't... It's very hard to reach perfection when you're tracking somebody there can be perfection but that is perfection okay but it is very very hard to reach perfection that's how the average thinks okay my philosophy is that for dodging you should be able to cognitive cognitively control your movements to make your opponent miss and that's what we're going to discuss today uh, another video I'm going to discuss, uh, if this video, you know, takes off, I'm going to discuss the difference between tracking your opponent and reading your opponent. So I'll do that in a separate video, but today, today only we're going to discuss this. So the context behind this dogfight is I was going to show Charbot why he's missing all of his shots. So I intentionally, for the first half of the first clip that he threw at me, for, that he dumped at me, I dodged in a way that it was easy for him to hit personally. Uh, there's not going to be any audio for this video because I was playing copyrighted music over it. However, so after that, I started dodging in a way that was very hard for him. And you're going to see the difference. Over time, he's going to hit less and less shots. So let's start, let's start. So I obviously flare, and then I start shooting, right? So all of this, all of this right here, right? So look, I started 100% because I just started the dogfight, right? And after the first clip, he takes me down to so he stops shooting. I'm at 52%. That was one clip, all right? I bet he's a little bit lower than that, judging by the smoke trails and all that. So let's, let's keep going. So what my movement there was, right, is I stayed in the same place for most of the time, right? So most of the shots he hit me there, right, from starting from here, I kind of stayed in the same place. You see that, right? I was making very, very subtle, small movements to try to juke him, but he's not taking the bait. So what you have to do, I adjusted right there and then, but what you have to do when you're trying to adjust like that is you have to realize he's hitting a lot of shots when you're doing small movements. So what do you do? You enlarge your movements because he's, you know, he's aiming where you were. He's aiming where I was, not where I'm going to be. So I'm going to abuse that. Watch. I'm going to abuse that. So now I start to prolong my movements and then look. He starts shooting me, and then I, you see there, I fucked up again. So you can see here, this kind of proves me. Because look, I started, I was pressing E right there. Hold on, let me, let me go back to where I just got shot. You see that right there? That is when I press E. 
you can look at the speed values in this corner. Boom. I start to go down, and then I get shot. I realize that. So I'm at 44%. I think I'm winning the dogfight. I'm not entirely sure. But then I realize that. I get fucking shot there again. I'm like, okay. I just fucking won't anymore. And I win. Right? That's the entire dogfight. So there's a lot of data. There's a lot of data you can collect from every fight. And you have to keep thinking about that. And through my mind, I'm also going, how can I aim better against him? What can I do to make myself better? That's the philosophy you need to have if you want to be successful. So let's watch the dogfight again. Let's watch the dogfight again. Okay. Review. Short review. Okay. So he's landing a lot of shots, but I'm doing slow and subtle movements. I have to adjust to make sure that he's not hitting me anymore. And as you can see, it's working. Okay, I fucked up again. And this confirms that he is aiming where I was because when I press E, he starts to hit me again. And boom, I win the dogfight. Cutting it a little bit close at 24%. But yet again, when you go through this in longer sets, you're going to win. Maybe the first couple times, maybe the first time, you're going to die. But after that first time, or the second time, you should have enough... Definitely after the second time, you should have enough data to be able to kind of download your opponent. What is he going to do? How is he going to try to aim at me? And how is he going to dodge? And what can I do to adapt to that? That's why set to threes, especially in fighting games, are very, very important. Because you only have one mistake. You can only make one major mistake of losing a game to win, right, to win the entire set, it's not, you, it's like, imagine you losing a dogfight, it's like losing a battle, but if you take the set, if you take the first to three, if you take the first to five, that's winning the war, so it doesn't matter if you lose the first battle, you just need to collect data from that battle in order to make yourself succeed in the future battles and make you win the war. So that's kind of what I wanted to go over in this video. I know it's not very long. It's about half the length, and I only went over like 18 seconds of footage. But it's important for people to understand, how can I make myself better? Not, well, you should be able to make yourself better in the long run, but also in the very short term. You have to make those split-second adaptations to make yourself better. That's been the video. Peace out, guys.